5. That volume, number 17, is now one of the most famous publications in the history of science. At the time, Einstein wasn't even a scientist. He's still applying for jobs at colleges, high schools, always getting rejected. We call it Einstein's miracle year. It is certainly not uh, a time that he would describe himself as a miracle year. Miracles convey a sense of something happening easily. I don't think that Planck knew that Einstein was a patent clerk of the third class. So he must have then become curious about who this unknown Albert Einstein in Bern was. This unknown Einstein is in fact the father of a one-year-old son and husband to a quiet and serious fellow student from the Swiss Polytechnic, Maleva Maric. When he was at the Polytechnic in Zurich, he was quite a ladies' man. He would play his violin at ladies' luncheons and cocktail parties, so he knew quite a few young women in his day. But Maleva caught his eye. Maleva is the only woman in the class. Here was a physicist. He was smitten. In a temporary detour from their shared scientific passions, Albert and Maleva are married in 1903. A year later, their first son, Hans Albert, is born. The Einstein family lives in this small two-room apartment in the Swiss capital. The rather limited circumstances in which they lived were not what he would have hoped for at this stage in his life. Maleva had always wanted to be a great physicist, but she flunks her exams at the end of her terms at the Zurich Polytech. She becomes a sounding board on all the great miracle year papers of 1905, especially the special relativity paper. She helps type it up. She helps check the math. But she ends up being a housewife. Einstein is trying to do his scientific work at the same time that he's working six days a week. In 1907, Einstein agrees to write a new article explaining special relativity. But when he re-examines his theory, he finds it seriously limited. It was called special relativity for a reason, and that was because it really only dealt with moving at constant speeds. In other words, Einstein's special theory of relativity only applies to a special case, an object moving in one direction at a constant speed. But Einstein wants to understand the real world, and the real world doesn't work that way. Einstein realized that his theory failed for accelerations. But in our universe, everything accelerates. On a bumpy road, jet airplanes, on a subway car, everything's accelerating. So there was a defect in special relativity. On Einstein's imaginary journey, if his speed varies at all, his theory, his notion of how objects behave in time and space, falls apart. His scientific mind wants it to apply to all cases. Einstein knows that for his theory to work, it has to account for everything in the universe. And that includes the pervasive and invisible force that holds everything together. Gravity. Gravity is everywhere. Gravity holds us to the floor. Gravity holds the sun together, the solar system together. Where was gravity in special relativity? Einstein wants to expand his special theory of relativity into a general theory of relativity. A theory that will explain not just time, but also gravity. He realizes he will be fighting more than two centuries of scientific thought and his hero, Sir Isaac Newton. It's 1907, and the 28-year-old Albert Einstein is still a patent office bureaucrat. It has been two years since he published his special theory of relativity and the ambitious Einstein decides to advance an even more radical interpretation of the universe, a general theory of relativity. Doing this will require him to take on his scientific hero, Sir Isaac Newton. In Einstein's time, Isaac Newton was God. Newton was the founder of modern science. This is the actual first edition of Newton's Principia Mathematica of 1687. This 
priceless artifact. This is the very, very famous book which became the foundation of universal physics for centuries until Einstein upset the apple cart. It has been almost 250 years since the apple fell from the legendary tree on Isaac Newton's estate, giving Newton the inspiration to formulate his law of gravity. Newton said that if an object falls, it's because there's a mysterious force called gravity pulling it down. But you know, Isaac Newton himself was not satisfied by that. Objects move because they're pushed. Not pulled, objects move because they're pushed. So what is pushing this? Newton didn't know. So Newton simply threw his hands up and said, I don't know. So I'm gonna invent something called gravitational pull. And Einstein said, no, this theory can't be right. He was prepared to simply go, I really want to solve this problem. I want to really understand the whole universe. Max Planck said to him, you can work on gravity if you want to, but there are two problems. You're not going to be successful. The problem is too hard. And if you do, no one will believe you. It's an extremely difficult task. It's not clear where to begin or how to go about doing it at all. Ultimately, the thing that gives him that clue turns out to be his old faithful way of reasoning, the thought experiment. So it's what you and I would call daydreaming, but he gets to call them thought experiments because he's Einstein. He's in his office at the patent office, looking out at the window, and he imagined a man working on a roof and he begins to wonder what would happen if one of those men were to fall off the roof. And then he had the happiest thought of his life, the inspiration of the ages. He had a vision. The man will not actually be feeling his own weight. He would be weightless. And then he imagined, if you're in an elevator and somebody cuts the cord, what happens to you? You fall. But the elevator falls at the same rate you do, so you are weightless inside the elevator. So then Einstein got it. It's as though gravity's been switched off. What's really going on? There is no such thing as gravitational pull. The Earth has curved the space around me, and space is pushing me into this chair. Space itself can be curved. Crazy sound. <laughs> Space is adjustable. It's actually malleable. Space and time are malleable. It's this flexible thing that can be twisted. You bring an object into space and it distorts the space around it. Why does the Earth go around the sun? Most people would say, well, the sun's gravity is yanking the Earth toward the sun in a circle. Wrong. The Earth is going around the sun because the sun has warped the space around the Earth, and space is pushing, pushing the Earth toward the sun. He had a new theory of gravity, a new theory of the universe. Einstein publishes his ideas about gravity. At the same time, his work on the atom brings him increased attention. As a result, in 1911, he's offered a position as a full-time scientist at the University of Zurich. The 32-year-old patent clerk finally leaves Bern to become, for the first time, Professor Albert Einstein. People start realizing that those miracle year papers of 1905 are probably right. And he starts getting invited to the Solvay conferences, which are the gatherings of the greatest physicists in Europe. Convened by the Belgian philanthropist Ernest Solvay, these conferences bring together the greatest scientific minds in Europe, and Albert Einstein is among them. In fact, he's the youngest professor there. He made an impression. He was friendly, he was funny, and he was smart, really smart, and people saw that. That was also a moment when Mileva must have perceived that she was part, still part, of this small burn world, whereas Einstein had become part of a bigger world. 
she writes these plaintive letters.